Okay, it's time now to take a look at the symmetrical properties of circular functions. Now, uh, let's let's develop some ideas here. We have in front of us a, a unit circle. All right, so um, we've got a circle of radius one unit. So there's one there, one there, minus one, and minus one on those on those points. So this is called the the unit circle. All right, so let's get that out there. Unit circle so-called because it is one unit in radius. Um, it has equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. If you recall from way back here somewhere in the course when we looked at uh, graphs and we might have gone in here and there might have been circles, there they were, and we looked at, gee, look at these notes, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Here we are, which is the uh, equation of a circle. Okay, so back to where we are. This is x squared plus y squared equals 1 because it's a, uh, it's a 1 radius circle. Okay, so that gets us started. This here is the x-axis, clearly, and this is the y-axis. And we're going to start off by having a look at, I'm going to extend a little radii out here to a random point. I'm not wrapped with that. I want to have a little, a decent little line to start things off. It doesn't even hit the... Doesn't even hit the right. It doesn't even hit the origin. That one, right? That one will do. Okay, so this is my radius of one unit length. Okay, let's uh, let's have a look here. So what I want to do is I want to get you thinking about uh, this angle in here that's made anti-clockwise. So an anti-clockwise direction. So angles are measured here anti-clockwise around from positive x. Okay, so that angle in there, theta, whatever it is, it's obviously between 0 and 90, something like that. Okay, um, and I want us to start thinking about something here to do with right angle triangles. I'm going to drop a little perpendicular down there. Make a right angle triangle. Now this length here, let's call, let's call that length y, and this length in here, let's call it x. Okay, so what can we say about this little triangle here? All right, shout out loud, sine theta, sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. We've just done a little soccer tire work, haven't we? Sine theta equals y over 1. All right, well, that's just y, isn't it? So y is equal to sine theta, that distance there, sine theta. All right, now, similar idea to get cos theta adjacent over hypotenuse. So x is equal to cos theta. So this distance here is cos theta. This distance here is sine theta. So what are the coordinates of this point here, do you think? So those coordinates there are, oh, sorry, x, y, cos theta, sine theta. So the coordinates are, in terms of theta, cos theta, sine theta. Okay, so what's important here is that uh, we recognize that this, this point here, this point's coordinates will be cos theta, sine theta, just from this right angle triangle Sokotoa, where theta is the angle the radii makes with positive x. This angle in here, so theta is the po is, is this angle in here made between the radii and positive x in a anti-clockwise direction. This is this is positive angles here, and we'll learn soon, shortly, that going the other way is is um, is 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 uh, are negative angles. Okay, so if we now just take this blue line. I'll just change the color. If we take it across so that we've got that symmetrical reflection across the y axis, then this angle here, theta, is maintained. Also, what we'll find is now we've got an angle there. Uh, this is going to get very busy in here, but this angle in here now is 180 minus theta, if you think about it. Right, that, well, that angle from, from the x axis all the way around. Now, what we've said is that the x-coordinate here will equal the cos of that angle there. So the x-coordinate here will be equal to cos 180 minus theta. Right, that's, that's the... I need to, need to make that a little bit bigger. Okay, so this, this, the coordinates of this point in here, I'll just draw an arrow in, cos 180 minus theta. Right, this is, that's the x-coordinate. And the y coordinate is sine of that angle, sine 180 minus theta. 
Okay, so there they're going to be the coordinates. So this, I don't know if this is a 150 degree angle in here, then the coordinates at this point will be cos 150, sine 150. Now what we're, what we're developing here are some relationships. Because as we can see, not a lot changes here. If we just drop some perpendiculars around, we'll see that actually our y coordinate doesn't change, does it? So sine of theta will equal sine of 180 minus theta. So that's quite useful. So I can make a little note of that in there. That's going to be the same as sine theta. We're going to relate everything back to theta. And what about cos 180 minus theta? This, this x coordinate here is just going to be the negative of this x coordinate here. So that'll be just the negative of cos theta. All right, so sine theta stays positive in the second quadrant. Cos theta goes to negative. All right, let's keep going. I'm going to drop now down to the third quadrant and where's our angle theta now if we were reflecting over here that angle theta is in there so now our angle is 180 plus theta or pi if we're talking in radians radians plus theta and what we'll see here is that all these properties are maintained and let's think about the x and y coordinates what is our what are our coordinates now of that point in terms of theta okay so the angle is 180 plus theta so the coordinates of the x coordinate is cos of 180 plus theta and the y coordinate will be sine of that angle there sine 180 plus theta bracket that close that off they're the x and y coordinates but let's also now relate it back to right, what is that as a as a y coordinate? It's the negative of that y coordinate. So it's the negative of sine theta. So sine theta has got that value, and sine 180 plus theta has got that value. So this has got the value minus sine theta, and the same with cos. Look at that. We've got an x coordinate which is the same as the x coordinate there. So that is minus cos theta. So these have the same value. And then finally, we'll flip into the last quadrant and we'll get an angle like so. Theta goes in there. And let's examine again now our x and y coordinates. Our x coordinate at this point, which is now this angle in here to the orange, is 360 minus theta. So we're calling it cos. 360 minus theta, remembering that whatever this angle is here, any clockwise from positive x, round of the radii, gives us the coordinates on the unit circle here. So cos 360 minus theta, sine 360 minus theta. And what are, how, how is it related to the original cos theta, sine theta coordinates? Well, cos theta it's exactly the same. So this is equal to cos theta. And this here is equal to minus sine theta because it's the negative of what's up there. So what we've established here is that um, cos theta and sine theta are both positive in this quadrant because they're the x and y coordinates. And all the x, y coordinates are positive in this quadrant. In this quadrant here, so angles between 90 and 180, the sine 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 of these angles are still positive because sine relates to the y coordinate, whereas the x coordinates become negative, so cos becomes negative. They're both negative in this quadrant, and cos is positive, but sine's negative in this quadrant here. So um, what we okay, so I need to introduce tan theta now, and um, and, and we need to talk about what tan theta equals. So tan theta, let's think about this, what we know about Sokotoa. Let's go back in here to theta, y over x, opposite over hypotenuse, sorry, opposite over adjacent. So tan theta equals y over x. But in terms of theta, that's sine theta over cos theta. So tan theta is equal to sine over cos. Right, that's a really important result. Okay, and from that, we can work out, which is also going to be important for us, and which we'll note now, 
where things where where else um, our trig ratios are positive and negative. So in the first quadrant, where angles are between zero and ninety degrees, our x and y coordinates are positive, so cos and sine are positive, and therefore because tan is sine over cos, tan is also positive. So all of our sine, cos, and tan are positive in the first quadrant. Let's move into the second quadrant between 90 and 180. We have our cos values, as we can see here, are negative because we have negative values, negative x coordinates. We have positive y coordinates, so sine is positive, but because tan is now positive over negative, tan is negative, sine is therefore are only positive in this quadrant. So sine of angles is in this quadrant are positive, uh, but cos and tan are both negative. Let's go into the third quadrant. Um, both negative, aren't they? X and Y are both negative, but because tan is sine divided by cos, it's negative divided by negative. So tan actually becomes positive in this quadrant, and it's the only one that is. Go into the fourth quadrant. We've seen already that cos, com uh, cos comes back to positive because X coordinates are positive in this quadrant. Think about that. The y coordinates are negative, so tan is also negative. Cos is the only positive. This can be remembered ASTC, all stations to Cario. Okay, all stations to Cario is going to help us remember what's positive in what quadrant. Now, let's just see, quick, quickly see how this works. Uh, let's say that theta equals 60. Let's say that theta equals 60, so that we're using that as our angle here. Therefore, that would say that sine sine 60 would be the same as sine of 180 minus 60. Okay, so that because that would it's delivering the same y coordinate. So sine of 60 would be equal to sine of 180 minus 60, which is sine 120. Uh, that's that's great. What about cos 60? Cos 60 would be equal to Let's look into the second quadrant at this angle here, 120. Well, it would be cos because cos 60. If this was 60, is equal to that x coordinate there. It's equal to that distance there. Cos 120 would be that angle there, which is that x coordinate, right, of that point there. So it's negative, negative cos 180 minus 60, which is minus cos of 120 degrees and if we went into the third quadrant and had a look at um, let's say tan let's say tan 60 that's going to be so that's a 60 degree there that's 120 if you took that angle into the third quadrant it's now 240 degrees 180 plus 60 so tan 60 will equal it'll be the same as tan 240 because at that point if you look at it there, sine divided by cos will be the same as this value of minus sine divided by minus cos. So tan 60 and tan 40 will have the same value. So what we're going to work on doing now is just having a look at how values across quadrants are kept intact through this symmetrical property. We'll get a little bit more practice um, as, we, as we work through exercise 16E when we uh, meet next in class. I'll see you then.